Once again, it's Kadar Brandon Stewart here for the podcast doing another car cast video. Auburn football is in full effect. The A Day game will be this weekend. It's threatening the rain. Um, I know some of you guys are probably thinking, like, damn, man, uh, deterred from the rain. But I'd rather be deterred by the rain than be deterred from not having spring football altogether. Because if we were re rewind this thing back to 2020, absolutely no spring football. Absolutely nothing. There was all, everything was up in the air <clears throat> as to whether it would even be a football season to begin with. So I'll take this. I'll take, you know, rain, uh, threat of rain. Man, I'll take it. But either way, when we go into the spring football a day game, a big celebration for Auburn. Definitely didn't have it last year, and uh, I think it's a lot of stuff we got to look at. One of the, one of the things that I want to talk about <clears throat> when we talk about the five things that Auburn has to look forward to here in this football ball uh, spring football a day game coming up. Number one, it's gonna happen. I think we discount the all of, of the things that have taken place for this to even happen. Stuff not interrupted by COVID-19 for the most part. We got a full spring, fledged spring. Got some guys that have been able to display their talents. Got some position changes. Got a brand new coaching staff outside of Carnell Cadillac Williams. So everything is absolutely happening at this point. Number two, of course, you got the quarterback battle that no, I mean, we, we're not really talking about it. We, we, we would assume that Bo Nix, the incumbent starter, would be taking on the reins as the quarterback for the Auburn Tigers. Uh, we, we, we're going to assume that that's going to take place. A lot of happens. He's got a break uh, in my last video I talked about Bo Nix in my commentary and there was a lot of uh, you know a lot of comments in that comment section that talked about the fact that you know you know whether he was overrated coming out of high school completion percentage was absolutely shaky and usually when I do a Bo Nix video that's where I get most of the dislikes what do you guys want do you want a guy to get on here and say, hey, it's all the offensive line's fault? You know, is that the general consensus as we talk about Bo Nix and his five-star recruitment pretty much following the same stream from high school at below 60%? We're going to blame the offensive line totally. Now, I'm not saying the offensive line is at fault uh, or is not at fault, but hey, we got to put some accountability on both because when you are a five-star recruit, we expect you know you to, to make some things happen because when you're a high-level player like, say, Cam Newton, let's, let's talk real briefly about Cam Newton back in 2010. You take Cam Newton out of that equation. And you all can argue me from the beginning of this video all the way to the end. And Cam Newton made it happen with what he had. He did have, like, absolutely amazing wide receivers. He had a pretty good running back. He had a pretty good offensive line. I'll give him that. But as far as, you know, like overall, just a favorable situation at Auburn, no, he didn't. He he quarterbacked a otherwise seven and five team to a national championship. This was not a team that had a great offense. I mean, a great defense, and definitely doesn't have the defense that he that that Auburn is going to have this year. He definitely didn't have the skill set of players that Auburn has this year. But he navigated that thing to a national, I mean, a national championship. How about that? Leading the cam back in 
2010 over Alabama. Like, how many times do you see teams down, like, multiple touchdowns against Alabama in Tuscaloosa that's able to lead a team like that to victory? It just, it just normally doesn't happen. So, number three, when I talk about the A-Day game coming up, I, I talk about things like, you know, let's let's look at the defense. Let's look at the defense. Derek Mason said, "Hey, I got a candy shop going on over here." You know, it's like I'm I'm like a kid in a candy shop. And when he says things like that, what he's what he's referring to is the fact that he has a diversity of talent on all levels of the defense. He has multiple layers of talent at the defensive line. I mean, the guy has 12 to maybe 15 guys that he can rotate, that he can get different looks at, and he can actually schematic some stuff. Kind of like uh, Kevin Steele. The first thing that comes to mind is Kevin Steele when, when he went up against LSU in 2019. I think that was an epic part of Kevin Steele's career. In the twilight of his, of his career, facing one of the easily one of the best offenses in modern college football history and able to piece together a 3-1-7 all, uh, defense that, yes, LSU had 500 plus yards still, but I, when I tell you those were the, the hardest 500 yards that Joe Burrow and company were to gain, and it was what it was. And I'm going to tell you why. It's the reason that Derek Mason is so excited about this defense is that he has a diversity of talent. No, nah, these guys are not all five-star recruits, but he has situational guys that he can put in there at different times. Like, hey, you know, we got, we, we you know, we, we're, we're trying to, have a you know a situation where we got some beef on the field. We got Lee Hardy. We got you know different guys like that on the defensive line that we can put in. We can also uh, diversify Smoke Monday, things like that. Derek Mason has a lot of talent at his disposal, and I think that's why he's so excited about being the defensive coordinator at Auburn this year. And Eason, the defensive line coach. I mean, you got so many guys that you can put in position to see what they can do from a situational standpoint to where this could be a real interesting thing. Number three, Auburn is clean house coaching wise. The only guy left is Carnell Williams. We look back to Kevin Steele, I was never really a fan of the 425 offense, I mean defense that Kevin Steele ran because it it leaves especially from the the talent that he had to run this type of defense. You to run a 425, you got to have some stellar talent on each level of the de defense. Now it happened to work out for him in 2019 because the defensive line was just so damn good. You know, you got Derrick Brown, you have Marlon Davidson on that defensive line that, you know, you can rotate these guys up and down the line of scrimmage. And then you had a pretty, pretty decent set of linebackers to make this thing work. And then, of course, the secondary, you have, uh, you know, the multiple layers of talent there. But then you go into 2020 with the talent that Kevin Seal had, it wasn't going to work. Four, I mean, these guys were, number one, the defensive line. If you're going to run a 4-2 defense, the defensive line has to be very, very good. And the defensive line has to be able to put pressure. Now, some of y'all probably were wondering, why, why were teams so able to convert on third downs against Auburn so easily? I mean, it, no pressure. There's no pressure. You, you have... You're secondary on the island. You have your you only have two linebackers in the interior portion of the football field. So you leave yourself vulnerable 
for these types of things if other things doesn't don't take place. And I think, you know, with the three, four variation defense, especially with the variable talent that Auburn has, I think they have the opportunity to have a really, really good defense this year. I'm not going to sunshine pump this thing. You know, Auburn still has some challenges, but they have the opportunity from a schematic standpoint, given that the majority we're going to now we're going to actually do a video on this to display why this three, four defense will actually work for Auburn, especially considering the fact that the majority of the guys is going to be asked to execute this defense. This is what they did in high school. And when you, you bring guys that did this in high school and then with Kevin Steele, you got them running a whole level, another level of schematics with a 4-2. Owen Papo is not a 4-2 linebacker. He is a 3-4 linebacker. And I think he was really excited to have a guy like Derek Mason and company to bring this to the forefront. Number four, the 8 game coming up in Auburn, I really like the fact that it will be 40% capacity, right? And Brian Harson even said it's 40% now, but that's not what it's going to be in the fall. It's going to be probably close to full capacity to where Jordan Hare will be a factor again as far as crowd noise and things of that nature. And, of course, you got Georgia and Alabama coming to Auburn, Alabama. And I think Brian Harson will have his team prepared to play these games. Texas A&M is on the road this year. LSU is on the road. It gives Brian Harson the opportunity to actually beat LSU for the first time on the road since I was in college. Over 20 years ago, in 1999, the cigar game, really looking forward to the prospect of that possibly happening. And number five, War Eagle. To all of the Auburn fans who have been supportive of my channel, approaching 1,000 videos on Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. I want to give a shout out to all of the Auburn content creators who it's a, it's a, it's a hard job, man. On YouTube, it's a hard job doing this. And I'm definitely appreciative of all the subscribers over the last two years. We're approaching 4,300 subscribers on this channel. I want to give a big war Eagle. And I want you guys to flood the comment section and let me know what you want me to talk about next. Which, what, what, where we go moving forward. A-Day game Saturday. A lot of great things happening on the planes. A lot of positivity with the new coaching staff. Kennard Vernon Stewart here for the podcast. Talking Auburn football. Go ahead and like the video. Comment and subscribe to my channel. Your channel. Vernon Speaks Sports Auburn. I, I mean, I'm just... Really flattered to, to, to be able to be a part of your Auburn experience. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger. War, damn, eagle.